Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How's it going? I'm good. All right. So I was thinking the other day about something you said. Yeah. Which was, we can teach people to think, yeah. but we can't teach them to love reality. <laughs> and I don't know what that means. Like, what, what do you mean by that? It's not that we can't teach them to love reality. It's just much harder. Why? One of the best ways to teach people to love reality is to, uh, is to teach them to think. Loving reality is kind of a disposition. It's kind of, a, it's kind of like a, a deep curiosity and a deep humility. You have to be humble to love reality. You have to have humility. You have to, you have to be able to revel in the idea and in the statement that I don't know that I don't know something and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with not knowing. And, and when you say, I don't know, it leaves a question mark. Mm -hmm. And that question mark can occupy the space of what is real. Question mark can occupy the space of what is real. <clears throat> Meaning reality is that you know what you know and you don't know. Reality is, the reality is you might not know what's going on. You might not know what the truth is. You might not know, but the way to get to knowing reality, the way to, to really understand what's going on in any situation is to have that be a question mark because then it's a question, then it's a curiosity, then it's a something that can be filled in. You can, right. you can answer a question. But if you've already got a statement in there, this is the way it is, right. you can't answer that. You can't, you can't add into that. You can't evolve that right. per se. Well, so, but what if I walk around thinking, I know? <clears throat> Yeah, most people do. That I know reality, the reality. Yeah, it's one of the most important, I... one of the most basal biases we have is what I call reality bias. Uh, I think it's the, you know, the grandmother or the grandfather of all biases. There's lots of different biases, 80 something different biases that we study in the cognitive sciences. And um, it's a lot of biases. It's a lot of different biases. And there is, you know, there's different there specific. Biases? Yeah, there's like something like 80, oh, you know, okay. who know, it depends who you talk to. But, right. but generally so speaking, there's something on the order of about 80 different, you know, biases. There's, uh, well, so what I've seen posters out there that have to like, you know, 200 or something like wow. that. But I don't think, I think a lot of those are just people making stuff up. But, uh, you know, let's say there's 80 different biases that, that are being studied at any given time, that type of thing. And, um, you know, some of them are very specific, but they're all based on reality bias. <clears throat> reality bias is like the grandfather or grandmother of biases. The great, great, great grandmother of biases, you know. The ancestral. Yeah, the ancestral origin, origin point. point of all biases <laughs> is, is reality bias, which is that we, that we think we know, right? We think that's what a bias is, is essentially, right? Is that we come to the scene, mm -hmm. whatever scene it is, a situation at work, a situation at home, a situation at school, doesn't matter what the scene is, but we come to the situation, we come to the scene, and we've already decided something about that scene Before we're not we get there yeah and imagine if a detective did that like that would be a terrible detective like oh bad. i you know i know it was the you know bob with the candlestick in the library <laughs> and like you know maybe it is maybe it isn't but that would be a terrible detective right so yes. if, so if you imagine yourself as being a detective of of life mm -hmm. then reality is that thing that you're trying to figure out and it's all questions. It's not answers. It's questions, hmm. right? It's all questions. And so you approach it, if you approach it with an inquisitive mind, a curious mind, a mind that's trying to connect this little piece of fact or data with this little piece and these two conflict and hmm, that's interesting and, you know, reserve mm -hmm. judgment. Right. You know, I'll almost, you know, get rid of judgment would be the, the better thing to do rather than reserve it. Just get rid of it. Um, reserve it. Uh, opinion. Reserve your own hubris that you must know or must have an answer. And ironically, the, here's the great irony. The more you do that, the more you'll be a person who knows things. That's the great iron. So the more you know you don't know stuff, you'll actually start to know Yeah, the more time. the more you'll know over time. So if you That's really want to know things, a lot of things, and you really want to have 
a lot of knowledge and be someone that somebody looks to to oh yeah that guy's pretty knowledge or that woman's pretty knowledgeable mm -hmm. you know that's a person who approaches reality in this way and over time they get good at figuring out reality, you know? Well, what you said was thinking helps us with bias, helps us reduce our bias. And so is how does that relate to reality bias? How does thinking help well, us with that? Well, that, we got to unpack that a little okay. bit, right? Because because our thinking is creating the biases in the first place. Right. So you could say it's that confusing. thinking, yeah, it's very confusing. So you could say thinking is actually leading to lots of biases, and it is. But... Uh, but if we are more aware of the way we think, and the, and also the, uh, you know, anytime we're aware of something, we're also creating the not thing. So right. when we're more aware of the way we're thinking, we're also more aware of the way we're not thinking. I see. Um, that's kind of a yin yang. -y yeah. Thing so you're happens. saying yeah. <clears throat> right. So um, that awareness actually decreases bias that awareness decreases by. So when you're up thinking, when you're thinking at a, at a higher level, right? At the, and that doesn't mean like, you know, you're resonating at a different frequency or anything like that. I mean, when you're just- but That would be cool. Like that would be cool. this one goes yeah, up Yeah, like your chakras. Heaven. Oh yeah. Like the, <laughs> the spinal tap. The spinal tap, that was a good movie. <laughs> oh yeah, this one goes to 11. <laughs> See, you're much better at that. Yeah. I don't do accents. <laughs> he goes, but, but how's that different? Well, he goes to 11. <laughs> Right. So <laughs> you're saying that thinking creates bias, but then awareness of your thinking can help reduce having more awareness of the patterns of your thinking, not just like the literal sort of informational type level thinking. Right. Right. There's inf there's thinking kind of at the surface and then there's the structures of thinking that or the patterns of thinking that underlie it. And having more awareness of the patterns that underlie like and the how structures, you're how you're thinking, how not just thinking. what you're thinking. God. Yeah. But how you're thinking and why that thinking is is proceeding in the way that it's proceeding structurally, um, that helps decrease bias. It's it's not that you can't teach them to love reality. It's just that it's it's a little more difficult to teach curiosity and humility than it right. is to teach sort of the tactical basics of thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. So like. You know, I can teach you the tactical ways of thinking pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but it might take many life experiences and many uh, humbling experiences where you have reality bias for you to be like, huh, maybe I should like be more uh, curious. Maybe I should be, yeah, maybe I should like question my own uh, assumptions. Maybe I should like that takes that almost sense. experiential wisdom or something like yeah. that, that. That's just a little harder to teach. And so I always say, like, if I could start with anything, I'd start with loving reality. Because if 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 I start with loving reality, then I got somebody that's open. I they're see. open. Mm -hmm. They're they're they come in a state that is kind of humble. And they're open to the to the possibilities. They're open to not being right about everything. They're open to m having no idea how something works. You know, right. which is an uncomfortable place for all humans. Like when right. you don't know what's going on, that's a terrible place. That's why we make stuff up right. to fill in because not knowing stuff, especially stuff in your realm and your company and your family and your relationships, when you don't know stuff, that's yeah. like terrifying. It's embarrassing not to know. It's embarrassing. Nobody it's terrifying. Nobody stupid. wants to be that. But if you're just yeah. like... I'm a dipshit anyway, and like, <laughs> you know, who am I to really know things? I think what you mean is we're human. Yeah. We're just human. We're dipshits. <laughs> we're dipshits. Yeah. Humans. I mean, we're, we're, and I think, you know, for me, that comes from the fact that I, I did absolutely horribly all through school. So I have year after year after year after year of being a terrible student, dropping out of high school, failing out of high school, yep. um, and just being terrible at at like in the in the realm that is apparently or or uh self-proclaimed as the realm of knowing right which is school which is not true but yeah, careful. They, well, some of us they did proclaim. well school. yeah some of you <laughs> did do well at school but i'm saying like i spent so long being the dipshit right. that be, the role of dipshit is like a really comfortable role for me ironic so say you think you know reality and you're in a situation how does how does this 
work against you not loving reality? Like, what what does that mean to, I guess I- Well, there's the famous far side, you know, the classic, oh, my yeah. favorite uh, confirmation bias is one of the biases. That's the bias that that's sort of, re there's reality bias, and then right on top of that is, is confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is um, that we confirm our own sort of thinking, that we right. look around and we confirm what we already thought. So that there's that a great far too. side, uh, cartoon yep far side I, I don't know if far side's around anymore is it i have no idea i mean i'm assuming i don't so. think it's really popular with the kids <laughs> the youth the youth <laughs> we aging it's, ourselves uh, it's not popular with the youth um so, so it's what's in the cartoon yeah the far side was this guy that um did all these funny yeah, things yeah. and what's anyways the cartoon? the cartoon is these two pilots so you're looking it out the window of the plane yeah and it's these two pilots and they're kind of staring into this white abyss and there's a mountain goat. Oh. And they go, hey, what's that mountain goat doing way up here in the clouds? <laughs> right? Well, okay, so the, the so the cartoon is funny, right? They yes. think there's a cloud, they, they think there's well, a mountain. Well, it's funny goat. in a it's tragic. horrifically tragic way, right? Because these guys are about to die, right? Because that mountain goat is yeah. not in a cloud. That mountain goat is on a mountain. Right. And they are right there. So, you know, but if you're in that plane, right? Yeah. What do you desperately want to be true, right? You desperately want to be have something be true so badly that you're willing to sort of like suspend, suspend. reality, literally suspend reality, yeah. right? That's not loving reality. That's right. suspending reality. Mm -hmm. And you're literally going to be like, there's a mountain goat that's... in the cloud because we're in a cloud. Because mountain goats can fly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right? Right, right. So that's bad. You know, that's yeah. generally what we call in, uh, you know, mountaineering bad. Yeah, I was about bad to, juju. I was thinking you probably learned and really came to love this concept of love and reality up in the mountains. Because if you didn't love reality, you could get in real trouble in those kinds of situations, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I learned it at home as a kid, yeah. having a hard uh hard some hard times uh, that I learned that if you could get to reality faster you could uh, adapt faster than everybody around you and that kind of stuff. But but it definitely played out really well in my mountaineering career and as a guide. And um, it is absolutely what makes, I think, a great, uh, great climbers and great, great mountaineers and things like that and great guides. And yeah. is um, uh, not that I was a great mountaineer or climber, but you were a but, great mountaineer or climber. <laughs> no. Don't but talk like that about the, uh, you know, it was, um, it, it's being open to what's going on in the mountains and mm -hmm. not making assumptions, not jumping to assumptions, not, you know, the classic place that it happens is on, when you're reading the maps, believe it or not. Really? What do you mean? Everybody, when they're reading a map, when you're on a top, we call them topo maps, to a topographical map doing map and compass trying to find your way like in a whiteout or something like that now they have gps and things like that so yeah, it's like cheating <laughs> but um you know i i there's very few humans that don't want to just decide like yeah i know where i am oh, and you're like I there's see. no way you're there like look around you you're Based they they, they say where they want to be not where they actually not where are. they actually are wow, that's right cool. yeah. and so you're like well if if you were where you say you were there would be a like a mountain right there right because right. the, the map shows a bunch of topo lines and you know there'd be like a big canyon you'd be you'd be standing in a canyon you know or you'd be yeah, and yeah. there'd be a huge mountain right there and there'd be three mountains over there and you're like that's not what's happening like on the map if if you were there that's not this right Right. But that seems like a theme for life. Yeah. Right? So like 100 percent. Don't focus on where you want to be. Focus where you actually where you are. are. That's so it's just like reality. kitchen nightmares. Right. Where they're about to go under these restaurants and Gordon Ramsay's like, it's your food. Yeah. And like, no, it's not the food. It's the customers oh have done this and that and they've changed the traffic. Yeah, patterns, that's a great example. And they have like all these things in their mind. Great example. But the truth is, food sucks, yeah. right? Their food, and he but like literally. No matter how happens. many episodes of Kitchen Nightmare that I've watched, there's I don't think there's a single episode where Gordon Ramsay goes into that thing, into that restaurant, yeah. and he asks him like, 
how they, and these people are like millions of dollars in debt, I know. right? They're about to. And they're you know on. you can just look at the place and it's terrible, and 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 he's and he one of the questions he asks every time is like how's the food and they go oh the food's great fantastic. the food's fantastic that's not the problem it's the customer it's like people just stop showing up for some reason I don't know why people. like people <laughs> and you're like. So it's not the food. The reality is, it's the food. And it's always the food. Right. It's always the food. The food is always terrible. Right, but then that example is both things. Like, I don't want to see reality. Yeah. And I'm going to confirm that the reality I'm seeing is reality because I'm going to blame it on totally. what I want to blame 100%. it on to make it the problem I want it to be. 100%. Right. That's cool. And we do this all the time. We do this with our kids. We do this with our... I mean, it's just a very human thing to do, yeah, right? Sure. Like. We do it with our kids. We do it at work. We do it with our relationships. We do it with our friendships. We do it with the uh, yeah. You know, but if it's such everything. a human thing to do, why is why is it such a big deal? Why do we have to worry about it? I mean, if it's sort of natural to do it, because it completely kiboshes our life. Oh, that's kind of a problem. Because <laughs> right? these little guys are downside. Yeah, the tiny downside <laughs> is your life gets decimated, right? Like. The tiny downside is these people are in in millions of dollars of debt. Right, and without the intervention, they would go under. Yeah, and they would go they're under. They're in the process of dying because they're for, not in the process right. of adapting to reality. Right. Right, and if you're not adapting, then you're if you're not adapting, you're in the process of dying. Yeah. And that's another thing people don't tell you. Right. You know, when people die, a lot we think of dying as like this very like instantaneous Finite. thing yeah. right like you're alive and then you're dead but dying happens over time like you you die yeah. slowly it's, it's a slow it's slow if you watch your parents as they as they end up toward you know it takes a long time to die yeah in many cases some Sometimes other times not, it's but not but generally. but i'm saying like if you're not in the process of adapting then you're in the process of a die of dying yeah and uh, and that's what these restaurants are doing. That's what these you know the people are doing is they're not adapting. These organizations, they're not adapting to reality. Right. Right. And reality, you could think of when I say love reality or re reality bias, you could think oh reality like some big philosophical term. I'm talking about like what's happening. Actual Actually, what's happening on the ground, the real situation, the real relationship, the real whatever you're dealing with, the real team. Yeah. What's happening on the ground? That's, That's what I mean by it. it's observable. It's, it's role, right? you know, tactical. Well, I was thinking that, you know, depending on my role in life or what I'm doing, that adapt or die, uh, you know, you can see like all these huge companies that are going under. And I would imagine yeah. if you sort of did a, um, what's the thing that coroners do? Not the autopsy. Oh, or like, you know, the the... The After action post mortem, review. post mortem. If you yeah. did a post mortem on what they didn't die overnight, they weren't like a hundred million co dollar company and then overnight something went no. wrong and they died. No, they like weren't paying they attention had reality to feedback bias for a little while. Right, exactly. And they weren't learning. And That's they weren't, right. So they didn't adapt to nobody shops in stores anymore. <laughs> That's right. Most people shop online, right? People don't want late fees for keeping a CD of their movie in the car for three weeks and having it melt. Sounds like personal experience. <laughs> exactly. <to me. laughs> Wouldn't pay like more in late fees than you could have bought the movie for. You could have actually and produced the movie. <laughs> blockbuster. So and people under there are some famous forty cases probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Blockbuster? Really? I don't think so. Do you know about block? Yeah. Is that something? Did you ever go to a blockbuster? At 20, what are you, 26? Six. I don't think we're as old as you think we are. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> I'd like to choose to believe that. Well, in class, I always make like, movie right comments, and like, they're, like, they're looking at me like, what? But like, didn't you see, I just, dog. I just made a reality confirmation bias joke. We're oh, not as old as we actually are. Oh. I don't think we're as old as, we, as you think we are. Uh, That's me. That was a joke. Nice. <laughs> People will learn my jokes. So yeah, yeah, they will definitely learn your jokes. <laughs> that is a terrible face to me. No, it's just... Um, the reality is I need yes. to face the fact that I am, in fact, not funny. According to our children, yes. Oh, you're going to blame it on them. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't say it, too. Yeah. That and my singing. Exactly. I think I'm like... A fabulous. You're amazing at so many things. 
So I want to know how we actually do this. Like, how do we actually learn to, to, to be more accurate in how we think about reality? Like, how do we actually reduce our biases? Like, I want to know what I need to actually do. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, those to me, those are really separate questions. Like, one is the capacity to be accurate, and the other is the, 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 the accuracy. Oh, I see. Okay. And I think if you don't have the capacity to be accurate, then you have no hope of accuracy. Okay, but what does that actually mean in English? Capacity to meaning be you've got. That's why I say like I can teach you how to think really easy, yeah. but if you're not open to the possibility that you could be that your thinking could be wrong, then it's gonna then all the thinking in the uh. world isn't gonna like loosen you up to the possibility that you're completely out of your mind. Right. <laughs> I know you're not speaking to me. No, right? that, or, or that, you know, I mean, think of it this way. Like yeah. another, another way to think of it is like draw a little, draw a, a fraction, you know, like, like a, a numerator and a denominator. Yeah, right. what a fraction is. Yeah. And, and at the top, draw like, don't know, or sorry, at the, at the top, draw no, K. Yeah. And underneath it, don't know, right? DK, DK. right? Like. That fraction is something on the order of like point zero 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 zero, you know, one or something like that on the top. And then on the bottom it's like one comma uh, zero yeah. zero 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 zero. Right? Right. So like the amount that we, any human, no matter how smart they are, no matter how knowledgeable they are, the amount that we know is so much Small. insignificantly tinier than what we Small. don't know. What's well, possible? Yeah, and just like all the different, the, the yeah. complexity of things. If you just understand that basic kind of structure, then then you understand what it means to have humility, and to have the capacity, and to have the capacity that you because that you even if you, you know absolutely it. know some yeah, things, yeah. you still don't know, much. you know, much. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and you, and you don't have to know everything. You you just have to get like a little bit of improvement to have massive gains, right? Like right. You, just little improvements in your thinking can completely change the way you interact with this reality. Right. So the love reality part is just a it's just like opening the door and walking in the building. Right. Right? It's just it's just being open to the possibility that you're wrong. Yeah being open to the to the grandeur of reality to like how amazing and how big and how complex and how much you know like here's a great example we know that the world is full of webs of causality right webs of causality meaning causality the 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 cause of anything is a web of things right it's not one thing right it's lots of yet things. on a daily basis we blame one thing for like all effects, oh, yeah, that's right? Great. All the time, yeah. which we call kind of linear cause. Like there's yeah, yeah. a cause and there's a effect. Right. But when in reality there's an effect and there's a web of causes that lead to that effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a classic example of like reality bias. It's never, ever going to be one cause and one effect. Ever. It's in, in the whole universe of things, it'll never be. That'll never be right. Interesting. So that's a bias that we have that we that we want to have one cause and one effect. And we take that even further, right? When we when we go, well, okay, so that didn't work, you know. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then we go, well, what if we go to the cause before it? And then we do these silly little games like uh, yeah. the five uh, whys, you know, yeah. and a why and why and why, because yeah. the answer to all whys is because the, right. the existence There's of cause, cause. Yeah. right? So then we go back, 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 and we find the root cause, right? But it's still linear, right? <laughs> and then we're back at the root cause, and we're like, oh, the root cause, that's the one we got to focus on, right? So it's, but it's still like this very linear system. Yeah. Well, that's not the way the universe works. No. That's not the way reality works. Reality works in webs. Right. Reality works in networks. So anything that comes about is the result of a network of causes. Hmm. Right. So that's an example of just having the hubris to believe that you can identify the single cause uh. 
or the, the single line of causes that leads to something, you know, and then and then when you do something with that and you get good results. So, oh, look, like, yeah, see, like my mental model right. worked. I was right. <laughs> There's confirmation bias. Right? right. But that's just not the way reality structured. So so that's not really a great way to sort of approach reality. OK. Yeah. So then how do we improve? Well, in this case, you just understand that like things are things are t tend to be webs of causes, right? That right. there's a web of causality. It's so not, you look for more than you look one for cause. more than you one thing. You look for the relationships between things. You know, you, you purposefully look for more than one thing, right? If you want to solve homelessness, if you want to solve the 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 um, you know, mass shootings, if you want to solve any of these problems that we have, or if you want to solve problems at work or pro problems in your relationships, you know, yeah. like w if you're in a relationship, who who's going to be the root cause of of, uh, of any problems? You. No, you. No, you. No, you. <laughs> right? Exactly. Hands so down, it's you. <laughs> it's always the other person that's going to be the root cause. Well, it, it's actually a web of causality that's leading it. It's probably your like your your life and your you know whatever it is. That's all these different things, like causes and... and and both people it takes two to tango. Yeah. So both people are part of the cause. Right. Yeah. That lead to the effect that you're seeing. Right. But we never do that. No. We always go like, well, whose fault was this? Who's, yeah. who's at fault? Here? We do have a blame based. We've got system a pretty blamey base. And blame, by the way, blame is a direct descendant of ca of this linear causality. That's right, because you see, there's always something at the bottom. Yeah, you got to find that thing and then, right. you know, kill that dude. <laughs> That's punish that dude. That's a lot. <laughs> but if it's a web of causality, you kind of think differently about, well, punishment and blame and justice right. systems right, and all right. kinds of things. Meaning there's a bunch of stuff that maybe led to a person in their formative years to become so desperate that they commit crimes. It's not just that they're a bad person or... Sure. And that doesn't mean that they don't need to be held accountable. It doesn't mean, I mean, you know, we, we can do another whole podcast on, on, on that kind oh, of yeah. thing. We can do that another but, time. You know, that, that doesn't mean that you have to think about it in, in, in very wackadoodle kind of ways, right? <laughs> the technical term. Ta technical term, right? But, but it, it does mean that you have to embrace reality. You know, you have okay. to love reality and understand that. Sure, this guy did a terrible thing, but like 30 terrible things happened to this guy prior to him doing that thing. That doesn't mean that he didn't, that he didn't do that thing. Right. Right. And that needs to be dealt with. And, and sometimes it needs to be dealt with in, in you know, yeah, harsh ways. in harsh, what we would maybe consider harsh ways. But 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 just cutting off reality at that at that moment and saying, like, we're just going to look at this in a box. What is that doing? It's it's just making it so this occurrence, not this guy, this guy's going to go away, but this occurrence is going to happen more and more in society because okay. you're you're surgically removing it from the context context that it exists in, and so you never fix the context, so you never fix the problem. Mm, that's interesting. And the context is made up of other players and other yeah, relationships a lot and, of factors. and all these things that we teach in thinking. True. So these are just examples, but okay. So you were talking about the capacity to be to know you want to be accurate, mm -hmm. and then you said it was two things, right? There's the capacity to be accurate, and then the way you become the more. sort of tactical accuracy. Yeah. So yeah. What about that part? You know, that part is is it, we. It's very s simple in one sense. You just have to practice. That's the hard part, right? It's it's easy in the same way that. That yoga is easy, or the right. same way that weightlifting is easy, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that it doesn't take effort. It just means it's not terrifically difficult to figure out, right? Right. Um, and so, you know, there's there's these four patterns: D, S, R, and P: distinction, systems, relationships, and perspectives. D's are made up of identity and other. S's are made up of uh, part and whole. Relationships are made up of uh, action reactions and then perspective is made up of point and view and then those things interact with each other and that's like what your brain's doing all day long right if we learn those things and you learn uh, what we call 483 the four patterns D S R and P the right. eight elements which I just said part whole point view action reaction identity other and then the three dynamics 
the dynamics tell you how they work together. Mm -hmm. And if you learn those things and you understand the sort of complexity of, of how those things work together, then you suddenly will start to see patterns in the way you think. I see. And you'll start to see that, you know, even though I'm thinking about a plant and then I'm thinking about a piece of art yeah. and then I'm thinking about a water bottle and then I'm thinking about a situation at work and then I'm thinking about a uh, you know, situation at home. Yeah. And on the surface, those are all different. A situation at work yeah, is not a situation different. at home. Right. A plant is not a piece of art. A water bottle is not a situation at work. Right. They're all different. They're all different. So on the surface, we would never see those things as being similar. Right. But underneath, your brain is processing information in in the same way about work, about home, about the water bottle, about the plant, about the... So what you're you know, saying art. is you can be thinking about a bunch of different things, but the way you think about them is the same. It's the same. Right. But in but we way. miss that because we often just see the surface. And the, at the surface, a plant is not a piece of art or a, a plant is not a water bottle. Right. A, a, a work situation is not a home situation. The, right. Bob is not Sally. You know? Right. So we, we go, I had a conflict with Bob. And then later on, I had a conflict with Sally. And then later, I had a conflict with Pete. And you're like, well, Bob is not Sally, is not Pete. So... These guys are assholes, right? And it's you're like, me. but there's a common denominator. <laughs> it's not the food. <laughs> it's not the food, right? <laughs> well, that's funny. So we look for patterns. Yeah. And, and these patterns thinking. are these patterns of organization. How am I organizing this conflict? How am I organizing this conflict? How am I organizing yeah. this conflict? Like when you say order, you're like, how am I thinking about it? Yeah. And, what, and my, how is my thinking driving behavior? Right. right. How is my thinking driving what I'm doing, why I'm doing right. it, why right. I'm taking things personally over and over and over again or why I, you know, I, yeah. any of the many things that humans well, it sounds do like, as silly human tricks. It sounds like what you're saying is if you, if you combine the, the capacity to be accurate and these skills to increase accuracy, I mean, in English, I think what you would say is so... You think something, mm -hmm. right? I think X. And I think X is, that my version of X is the real, like that's reality. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, I have to be open to the fact that I could be wrong about X. And, yes. that, and that the way that I can better understand or get X to be closer to the real, the reality is to start to question X, like yes. what I'm thinking. And so I can think about what are the <laughs> distinctions I'm making what, what perspectives perspective am, am I, I taking? taking? Right. How am I how am I breaking X apart into parts? Yeah. Am, am I sure that that's how X yeah. actually exists? It's like you know, what are the relationships? Yeah, you're kind of interrogating yeah, yeah. your thinking. Yeah. And the only thing I would say is like you might be wrong about X. You're most definitely wrong about X. Like if you if you consider wrong in percentages rather than black and white, like I'm uh, either wrong or white, or wrong or right. Yeah. Right. So that's binary thinking. Yeah, like no. I'm either wrong or I'm right. Yeah. It's not about you're either wrong or right about X. You're you're some percentage right about X and you're some percentage wrong about X. Right. And so what we want to figure out is how yeah. how wrong are we? How right are we? What and the way we figure that out is getting feedback from reality. So we t we test things out. We go, "Well, I think it's this." Right. I think she's mad at me. Yeah. So how I how could I you. possibly find out if you're mad at me, right? Like I could go ask, "Are you mad at me?" I wouldn't tell you, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I could I could I could find ways to get yeah, feedback to confirm or deny my my thinking. Yeah, you're definitely wrong about X. There's a there's a great um, statistician named George Box who said all models are wrong, but some are useful. Hmm. And, you, you, right. you, you know, like all models, statistical models and all mental models, all of our models are wrong, but but some of them are super useful. So right. we want to figure out how useful is this model that I have, this right. way of thinking. Or like how close world. to reality. Is how it? close to reality yeah. is it? And, and the, so in yeah. order to do that, I have to feedback against reality. Meaning you're getting more and more information yes. into your thinking and then you can change the way you're thinking That's about right. it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you're getting closer and closer. Yeah. So reality bias is really approaching X with the acknowledgement 
that you're for sure wrong about X. You're for sure to not a to a degree, <laughs> to a degree. That's you're probably for sure. easier to swallow. <laughs> yeah, I think people have trouble with that one, but yeah, you're for sure. You're definitely not right about X to a degree. A hundred percent. Yeah, you're, you're not definitely 100%. not a hundred percent. You're not Hondo See? X. And then me, I'm yeah, like, well, exactly. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real. You have love reality on T-shirts. You have it on headbands. You have it on the gym wall. I mean, you're pretty, pretty dogged it. about loving reality because people just assume reality. They know reality. And I, I would I would just, you know, maybe we can wrap with this is like the 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 reason that I'm committed to it is is just because it's so useful to me. Mm. It's so useful The the. The thing it does for me is it makes me pause. It makes me sort of go, wait a minute, am I am I right on this? Yeah. You know, am I? Yeah. And and I think a lot of people are kind of like fire ready aim. Yeah. Right. That's right. And a lot of organizations and a lot of teams and a lot of leaders, it's fire ready aim, and 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 that's. You know, I'm all about action. I'm all about, you know, get it done, that kind of thing. But there's nothing actionable about fire ready aim, right? Yeah. That's that's not the kind of action we want. So no, that's not smart. When we when we have an awareness of reality bias and a commitment to that, to loving reality, um, I think what it does is it just it opens up that reality is like this cool question mark. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh, how do I answer that question? How do I, how do I figure it out? And yeah. my disposition changes because that's a question mark. Right. That's the, that dispositional yes. shift is what makes it so powerful because then I'm like, hmm, then I'm in like thinking mode. Then I'm in like figuring things out mode, getting feedback oh, mode. Yeah, you're open-minded. I mean, I'm open-minded and I'm in detective mode. I'm trying to yeah. figure it out rather than being like, well, here's my opinion and this is the way it should be and, right. and this is the way it is. And, and if I don't get it my way, then you guys are all wrong and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And that's just like, Binary. that's like, you know, I don't know what it is. It's Close That's not helpful. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't experience problem solving in a powerful way when I'm, when I'm in that mode. Yeah. In that closed mode, um, I don't experience decision making in, in, the, in a powerful way. Yeah. So love reality is kind of like you just uh, it's okay. the way you enter the room. It also, I think, is what makes you present. Yeah. It makes, you know, I mean, that's one thing I always say about you is that you're like incredibly present. A hundred percent. And I think it's I because no of past that. or future. I know. I think it's yeah. because of that. Yeah. Because you're sort of embracing every bit of reality that you know and don't know yeah. and you're always open so interesting there it is <laughs> see ya thanks for joining us we'll see you next time mm -hmm.